I am currently making some little handbags to sell and I thought I would share share <laughs> I thought I'd share the process um, <laughs> and I thought I would share the process with you of making them um, I have a few um, in front of me that are pretty much finished and I just need to put drawstring ties through and then yeah I thought I'd make one with you today to show you how I do it yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video I have a few sitting here nearly finished this one just needs its drawstring through the bag and then I've also got it in this other print so I am completely in love with these fabrics and if the sale goes well then I will make some more and it also has some vintage Laura Ashley fabric on its way to me so I am probably going to do a little vintage Laura Ashley fabric collection. Here are some of the bags I was working on yesterday and I'm probably going to make this brown one with you today um, and then maybe make a few more of these off camera um, but yeah I wanted to use the brown one to just show you how I make the bag because there's quite a few little steps and some little tips and tricks I can hopefully give you guys. Now I don't really want to move because I've got this thing, this little koala bear. You alright Fluffles? <laughs> she looks evil sometimes when the light sort of shadows all of her eyes. Oh dear. So I'm still trying to decide on the best ties to use for the drawstring but I think I've decided on these really pretty little velvet ties um, but I'm going to do some dark brown velvet ties on the brown one so I'm just waiting for those to arrive um, because I've got this gorgeous peach, peachy pinky shade to go with the other floral. I did order some of this thicker cotton um, but I thought it would be like a shoelace and this is much chunkier so I think it looks a bit too chunky whereas this one is a bit lighter. I was so happy when I found that I had enough of this fabric to make a few bags because it really is one of my favourite prints that I've ever owned and I can't find it, no idea who actually made it. Um, well I know that it's Regent Furnishings Pure Innocence Collection but that's all I know and I typed that in to every single eBay and Etsy and Google <laughs> and I haven't had any luck finding any more so luckily I have a fair bit to make some more bags out of. So I'm going to cut out two or three I think and go from there. I'm obviously just going to make one with you guys but I may as well cut them while I'm here. So because this fabric is a little bit thicker um, I do the drawstring in a different fabric but a very similar fabric it's just a lot thinner so this is my pattern piece and this does the front and the back of the bag and I will show you a very clever little way you can make a boxy bag um, just by sewing little triangles here's the fabric I'm just gonna see if I can fit three across easily three across there so I'm just gonna line this up check I'm not gonna cut into any salvages And then I have some very important notches on this pattern piece that show where the handles need to go. So I'm just going to put those in. Now because I'm not using a particularly rigid fabric, I did a lot of testing with different types of interfacing to see which one I liked the best. And in the end I went with this um, sew-in interfacing. So I'm just going to cut one of these out for now and then we can get on and start making. And the great thing about interfacing is you don't have to worry about having a grain because often there is no grain on interfacing so you can try and get as much out of it as possible. So now I'm going to go and iron this piece of fabric flat on top of the violin interfacing and then whilst I'm there I'm going to fold it up and press down so that we've got a nice halfway point. It's really important that you get all of the creases out as much as you can to start with because it's much harder to iron it once you've started making it. 
And if you've got some really stiff creases that you can't get out, then use a spray tool on your iron just to wet that area and then just hold your iron over it for a bit and it should get them out. And then you're ready to pop it on top of your interfacing. I'm going to make sure it's nice and flat <laughs> and I'm going to just fold it all in half. And then give a gentle press down in the fold. So now the next step is to sew down the side seams and I'm doing a one centimetre seam allowance for all of this. So let's go and sew the side seams down. So I've just sewn the side seams down and then I just matched it back up to my pattern to make sure the seams are in the right position. And then this bit can get a bit confusing um, but it's just, you just want to have to go with the movement of the fabric. <laughs> um, so we're going to open up the little pouch that we've sewn and we're basically just going to match the line at the bottom that we pressed down with the new stitched seam. So we're just pressing that flat and then I just put a little pin in the end because we're going to measure five centimeters in in a minute and sew a little triangle along the bottom. So then I like to take my pattern master and I will follow the stitch line with this straight line down the middle and I will measure five centimeters down and I will just draw a line across as my guide. So I've just got a little line across there that I'm going to stitch along. Okay, so this is what it looks like now that we've sewn those triangles in. And I don't have to worry about finishing off the edges because I'm going to line the bag. So as you can see, it's already starting to take the shape of the bag. And there we go. I've already got the beginning of the bag and that was super easy. You don't have to worry about matching squares to the sides. You just get that nice, clean, look to the bag. So one of the interfacings I bought for this bag was this super heavy fusible buckram and it's just way too heavy to sew with and create corners with. So I realized it would be the perfect thing to go in the bottom of the bag to give it some structure because when you put your phone in the bag or anything heavy you don't want the bag to just droop a load. So I've been putting the measured amount of buckram into the base of the bag. So that's just sitting in there loosely and we don't want it to just be like flying around and getting lost in the lining. So I put some stitches in the bottom, just in the sides at the bottom and that will hold that down nicely. It is fusible but it's not very sticky so it doesn't actually stay very well. So I'm just going to go and put some little stitches in the bottom. So now we've got the main part of the bag done. I need to create some lining to go inside this. Um, and then we need to do the handles and the drawstring, but we'll focus on the lining next. And I've just cut out the same size piece that can go inside. So this needs a good little iron. And I need to also stitch on my label. So that will sit on this bit of fabric about there. I need to just stitch that down. Okay, so I've just stitched the sides down on the lining and then I'm going to do exactly the same method of finding the corners the little triangles as I did for the outside of the bag. So that is now the lining ready to sit inside the bag. Now we're going to make some straps. I've got the fabric that I used for the body of the bag and I wrote down all of the lengths I need for the straps so that I don't keep forgetting them and having to re-measure. And so I need a width of three inches and a length of 33 centimeters for each strap. So I'm just going to 
see if I can get a three inch strip out of this. I'm pretty sure I can. And then I like to cut strips of fabric or straps with um, a little rotary blade just because I find it's a lot neater and you can be a lot more accurate with it. Okay, I'm gonna measure a little over 33 centimeters, which is the length I need. So that once I've made the strap, I can then measure it again and neaten it up. So now that we have the two pieces of fabric for the straps, I'm going to flip them over and chop a little bit of the same interfacing we used on the front of the bag. And I'm gonna place this down the center of the strap and I'm then going to iron over the fabric so that it sits on top and then one of them is gonna have a turnover and be ironed down flat. I've just zoomed you in so you can see what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna have one flap that goes over it and then another one will be pressed down at the top and then fold it over. And then I will stitch down that line and then I'll show you the next part. Next stage with the straps, um, this is why I have this weird tape setup going on on my desk so that I don't have to keep getting tape measure out and measuring again. So I've got the exact length on each end of these little bits of tape and then I have the centre point and the points where I want to stop sewing the little cord that I'm going to put in this bit of the bag. This is the cording I'm using to go inside the handles. It just gives it that sort of 3D feeling and feels a lot nicer to hold than just a nice flat handle like this. Like that's not quite as ergonomic. <laughs> and then with my pencil, I will go in and mark the underneath side of each strap. And I will just mark the two ends of where I need to so, and then this little bit of cord will just sit in the middle and I will roll it over to sandwich it in and I put these little clip pins in to hold it all together. It's a very satisfying bit of the bag making this part. <laughs> I really enjoy it. So that's what you then have to go and sew and I'll go and show you where I'm going to sew. The little lines I drew are where I'm going to start one part of the sewing. So I'm going to sew up the side and then I'm going to stitch along the length and then back up the other end. For that I need to change my foot to a right side zipper foot just so that I can get really close to the cord. And there we go, there's one little strap. Nice and neatly sewn, and then that can be stitched on like that. So now that we have the straps, I'm going to attach them onto the bag. And to do that, I'm just gonna find the notches that we put in the fabric at the start, and I'm going to match the inside up. And I don't actually put it on completely straight to the bag. I like to have a little bit of height in the center because then that brings the bag handle to a better position. So I just roughly pin these and then I will go in and stitch them down. And then you can roughly test that the handles are in the right sort of place. And then I will stitch those down. Look at that little sleeping beauty. I just can't cope with that. So the last thing that we have to make now that we've got the lining and the main bag is the top drawstring. And I found this fabric in my quilting stash and it is the perfect match for going with the top of the bag. It adds a little bit of contrast, which is quite nice, but also looks similar. So I'm just getting my fabric 
I'm going to fold it in half and place the pattern piece on top. And I'm ready to cut it out. So you'll need two pieces. And then again, this pattern piece has some important notches to add in. So you want to have some notches in the side where your turnover is going to fold over and then where your top is going to fold over. So I'm going to go and iron those down and I'll show you what I mean when I say that. <laughs> So I'm going to iron the piece flat and then I'm going to do one turnover of about 0.5 centimetres at the top or about a centimetre. You're going to want to fold it over again using that second notch that you made. And this width just depends on how wide your um, drawstring tie is so you can make it thinner or thicker. The next I'm going to just use my little scissors to cut one centimetre in underneath this fold and I'm going to open up these folds, fold over one centimetre for the entrance of the tunnel, do the same on the other side and then I will just fold it all back down again and give it one last press. So onto sewing the drawstring. This is what the piece looks like. We're going to open it up and sew this little bit here and then I'm going to close that back down and stitch all the way along this edge. Then once I've sewn across the tops, I can join the two pieces together and sew down the side seams. I'm just going to go and overlock the sides and then open it all out and give it a good iron. Okay, we're nearly finished with the bag. I've just finished sewing the drawstring part and I'm going to keep it inside out because we're now going to get the main body and add this and the lining so that we can stitch it around the top. So I put the drawstring good size together towards the front of the bag and then the lining will also stay inside out and I will put all of this inside here. So then all I have to do is go around and pin in the side seams so that they match and then basically just pin all the way around and then I will sew from about one handle here all the way around and stop at probably the other handle and then this gap I'll be able to pull it all through and we can stitch the top down. Okay, I've sewn the bag together and I've left this little hole just at the end and so I'm going to take the main bag and gently bring that all through. The trickiest bit is the bottom where I put that buckram because it's obviously quite stiff. You have to sort of bend it in half and wiggle it through and it's like birthing a bag. <laughs> Every time I do this, this is where I freak out and I think, how is this going to work? <laughs> and then a few minutes later, it will suddenly all come through and it will be fine. Getting there. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and I just like to shake it out. And so now you've got the lining in there and nice drawstring top 
and now we have to go and sort out this hole so I'm going to iron it flat pushing the lining down like this and then we will iron this bit inside and I will do a really neat top stitch all around the edge to just hold that together Now that I've pressed that down, I'm going to go and stitch all of this along the top in a nice neat top stitch. Amazingly, the brown ribbon arrived today, which wasn't meant to. So now I can put the tie straight into the bag and then that will be the bag finished. So I use this little contraption for my drawstrings and it's got a little loop that you can put the tie through and then you just find the end. And with the drawstring, you have to go through once, loop it round, and then do the same on the other side. So bring it through, and then continue it through the other side's loop. And then I will just cut a length off for this one. And I'll try and make sure that it's not too twisted. And then this is the first side, and we're gonna to have to go and do the same to the second side. So I'll just tie a knot at the end so it doesn't go back inside. And I'll snip the ends off so that you've got a nice neat tie there. And then I'll do exactly the same, but I will start with going in the other side. So there we go, now we have two ties and we'll just pull them together and that will give you a nice drawstring. So now you've got some dark brown ties that you can have loose or you could tie them up out of the way, do a little bow maybe um, and just pop it back down in the bag it's up to you really, you can have a play around with the bag. So yeah, there we go. That is the finished handbag. So here we have both prints of the bag. They are all going to be up on my website, probably by the time this video is up. So if you're interested, I will leave them linked down below. And if they sell out, then I will definitely be making some more because I'm really enjoying making these little bags and I just think they look so cute. I think I'm going to make this pink one's ties a little bit longer because I quite like the length of these. I really hope you guys have enjoyed following me along making these bags. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye!